Um, but I want to talk about your characters, um, Mai and Tam, because they are the focus of this book. They are the women on the poster, on the cover. So tell me how you chose them. And were you, when you were in Vietnam, did you see your characters? Um, no, but I saw other characters that made an entrance. Um, my and Tom, I think you pronounce it Tom. Tom, I'm sorry. Tom is Tom. Um, but um, there's three years difference between them. Tom is the older one. And Tom is uh, more educated, not more educated, but she's more academic. She's more thoughtful. She's more cerebral. She, she, uh, she wants to know what's going on. She's, she keeps up with the political situation in her country. She knows the history of her country. And her younger sister, she's 17 when the book begins. And the younger sister, Mai, is 14. And Mai, all she cares about is boys and makeup and the superficial things that even in Vietnam in 1968, girls were thinking about. They may not be, you know, and she's always bar borrowing her mother's makeup. Her mother, mother doesn't have a lot of makeup, but she's borrowing it and she wants her parents to arrange a marriage with the sampan maker's son in the next village because he's so handsome. And um, she's a lot more superficial than uh, Tom is. And so there's inherent conflict there, which of course, you know, they tell you, you cannot write a book without conflict on every page, even if it's only someone who wants a glass of water that can't get it. Sure. So those are the two women and they do have a lot of conflict. And in fact, they become estranged through most of the book, which conveniently made it easier for me to write their stories separately. And, um, I can't tell you the ending because then no one would read it. I don't, I don't want to know the ending. I, well, I know the ending because I, I read it, but, yeah. uh, but, but don't tell the ending. No. So there's a lot that happens after the war. The, you know, the, the, the war officially ended in, in April 30th, 30th, 1975, when the North Vietnamese took over the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon and immediately renamed it Ho Chi Minh City. Um, but there was a lot of after effects of the war too. Libby, one of the things that strikes me about your trip to Vietnam and then your subsequent writing of this book is that very few authors get to walk in their characters' footsteps. You actually were boots on the ground and didn't have to Google map or look at photographs or do your photographic research that way. You already had that in your head. Um, you must feel very lucky to have been there. It was seems serendipitous. It, it was, um, because um, I got to see the seedier parts of the cities, as well as the nice parts that, ever, you know, the tourist, you know, the tourist attractions. Um, and then we went outside of the cities and I got to, act, actually, we took a river trip, a boat river trip up the Mekong River. And I got to see some of the villages that, you know, they would have lived in. Um, and we went on to Cambodia, but, you know, uh, we took. Right stopped in Vietnam, I interviewed, one of the things I did was interview a North Vietnamese colonel who was now, you know, in his 80s, I, I wow. believe, maybe 90s already, who lived in this little, what we would call a hovel in the back streets of Ho, of uh, Ho Chi Minh City, of Hanoi, I'm sorry, it was in Hanoi, where, you know, there's just cobblestones and it's, and there's cats and there's bad smells and there's people selling their pho, you know, their, 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 soup, your, their stew on the soup on the streets. And I walked into his house and he was wearing his army uniform from the Vietnam War and he was this North Vietnamese colonel. And you know what, the, he had two pictures on his wall. One was Ho Chi Minh and the other one was Karl Marx. And it wow. was still there. Wow, wow, and wow. I, through a translator, I was able to interview him about what was going, what his opinions of the war. And actually he was the one that gave me the idea for the long hair army, which was what they generally called female fighters right. for North Vietnam and for the Viet Cong. Amazing. 
amazing. You had you had your own encyclopedia right there with that colonel. You, know, you had living history. Yeah, you know, he was he he wanted me to see it from his point of view. He was still after all this time a devoted Marxist. Amazing. 